103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. It seems to be the case that everyone, at least from a religious perspective, largely relies on tradition to inform their impression of reality. And I, I can only see from the outside different people pointing at very different things with utmost confidence and using tradition to back that up. It makes me realize that perhaps tradition may not necessarily be the best way to reach that kind of conclusion. For something that should be the most important thing for me, whether or not this God exists, whether or not I'm actually getting like true information, whether or not these feelings that I have actually are coming from this belief, or if there's something I'm generating within myself, and that would be a great thing to unlock if I actually knew if that was true or not. And I'm and while I wouldn't discredit anything that you can get from the Episcopal Church, I really love it. I like I love the concepts, I love the sense of community. I do wonder if the grand conclusions that are coming about with regard to a supernatural deity are justified, and whether or not I'm justified in having them based on an idea of tradition. What do you think? Welcome back. I'm Dr. Five. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And today we're talking with a guest. Uh, his name's Baby Seal. And uh, what's interesting is he's one of the last people that I actually had a SE conversation with. I went up to Nashville, let's see, like last weekend and set up at a park and I got a phone call and turned out to be a guy with the screen name Baby Seal. He wanted to talk about uh, his church, why he believed in God and some of the philosophies that he had. And I thought it was a really interesting conversation that we had. So I invited him to come on to this podcast slash radio TV show. <laughs> Not a TV show, just a radio show and a podcast. And uh, have a chat. And we've been talking for, let's say, the last 30 minutes about a whole bunch of different things, including his church as a, a Episcopalian church and his beliefs in Stoicism, a, 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 a philosophy on how we should live towards what we value the most and not waste time on things we don't have control over. We also talked about stuff like uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and a bunch of other cool things. But now we're going to really delve into uh, his religion and why he believes it, which is always like the fascinating thing, right? Like the epistemology behind it. So join me and Doubter5 as we delve into this guy's beliefs. But hey, let's see if we got any more announcements. Doubter5, you got any more announcements for us? Uh, since the school year is starting back, uh, the Secular Student Alliance has programs to give camaraderie and community to any free-thinking high school or college student who might be uh, like to be involved in the free thought movement or who would just like to find other free thinkers to hang with. Everybody needs like-minded friends and atheists are no different. Earlier, no, we didn't actually mention it earlier. No, but we didn't. Did have uh, atheist call in TV show. What? We have an uh, atheist call in TV do. show. Have you ever seen it? No, what's it called? What's it called? <laughs> it's called Free Thought Forum, and you can see it every Wednesday between 6 30 and 7 30 on Comcast Channel 12 or on Charter Channel 192. You can also watch it streaming online at ctvnox.org. Uh, you can also find archives of some of their shows on YouTube where a fan has been posting them. Just go to YouTube and do a search for three words. Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Okay, that's all for the announcements. Back to the show. Our, today's topic is Stoicism. Stoicism and, with our friend and, Baby Seal. And, uh, yes. you know, like I said, it's not an interview. <laughs> it is a conversation. <laughs> I was telling him during the break, it's like, hey, man, you, you're, you're free to talk to us as, or ask us questions, too. We don't want you to right. feel like oh, you're yeah. under the spotlight. Sure. And we really appreciate no. this call. Um, yeah, so, I, I appreciate being here. Thank you very, very much for having me. Uh, <laughs> so we had talked about Mr. Rogers. Um, that's a really, really fun show. I love that show. It's like one of the best PBS old school shows of all time. In my opinion, it's one of the best. Then we went into um, Episcopal Church, Tenets of the Episcopal Church. And then uh, I think we left into the break talking about... Um, reasons why we believe and you had mentioned that you want to talk about baby so you had want to talk about um the some of the ways that you the the things that you experience that justifies your high confidence in a in the god belief presented by the episcopal church what do you mean well, uh oh well i should clarify i mean um uh, you know 
I think that uh, <laughs> I, I, I joked with you, Wombat, last week. There's a joke that uh, whatever whatever you happen to believe, somebody in the Episcopal Church uh, agrees with you. Uh, you know, including atheists, like they're they're actual you know atheists that attend church. You know, for the community aspect, sure, uh, yeah, at least yeah. in our church, uh-huh. uh, and 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 we welcome them. And and uh, um, we we actually uh, I did want to mention too that um, we we have uh, open communion, right? I mean, uh, certainly other Christian uh, churches believe that you have to be confirmed or, you know, believe certain things to actually come and, and partake in communion. And, and, uh, at our church anyway, we, dude, you're selling uh, me the brochure. I church. love it. I love it. No, I know. It's great. It's, great. I know. it's, <laughs> it's we, we, we actually say like, Hey, what, you know, whatever you believe you're, you're welcome, That's you great. know, to join us. Sounds a lot like the Unitarian church. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I think for me, uh, the reason why I, I still, go to the Episcopal Church versus the Unitarian Church because, you know, in a lot of ways I, I agree the Unitarians uh, are very similar in that way is is just the the fact that I'm comfortable with the liturgy and, and the words. Sure. So I just want to, and I just want to outline, yeah. you're free to go wherever you want. This is America. I, I, and you said Texas, so that's like prime America, right? And <laughs> you, can believe, you can believe whatever you want. We're not here to tell you. What we're asking, though, is what's justifying the belief that you have that the God actually exists? And is it no, reliable? Sure. So what do you have? So, uh, again, uh, harking back to our conversation, I thought I, I was thinking a lot about, uh, you know, how do you um, get comfortable that, that my feelings and experiences, you know, the spiritual experiences that I've had in my life around God and feeling, you know, cared for and loved, uh, sort of in the, you know, universal kind of sense. Yeah. Um, good feelings. And, and so, you know, I, I, I looked into it and, and, uh, noticed among other things that, um, you know, belief in God in the U S anyway, has gone from, I think 99% in the forties to around 90% today. Uh, no, you know, so it could continue to move. Right. <laughs> but I kind of feel like, okay, uh, I'm interested in your take on, um, uh, how, uh, not, not that um, I'm confident in any particular set of beliefs around God, but the fact that God exists uh, based on my feelings, based on the fact that uh, at least 90% uh, yeah. of, of Americans believe in God, too. I'm, uh, you know, that's, yeah. I'm interested in your take on that. Well, let me ask you this, uh, just as a, your personal opinion. Why is it you think that the, all the different religions and all the different people who do believe in God uh, can't agree on what he's like? Or he, even if it's a he. <laughs> well, no, that's a, that's an intro. Oh, yeah, exactly. I, I'm very much a, a fan of not using the he pronoun whenever possible. But uh-huh. um, uh, I do wonder, and and I think I also benefit from sort of interfaith. Uh, I belong to an interfaith group, um, and I really appreciate like, hey, we as as multi multi uh, faiths can get together to do to do good works. We all agree, right? That um, uh, we, we can help out people and, and volunteer. The volunteering is good. So uh-huh. I, I, I really appreciate the aspects of faith that are kind of more universal across the majority of, of faiths to so say, Hey, maybe this is, um, you know, aspects of, of God or reality that we can agree on that, that, uh, you know, maybe this is, those are the areas that maybe have something to say about about uh reality and, and at least inform me about how i view reality and, and god i'm not sure if i followed on that answer so if there's a lot of different people on in different churches even on the same mm-hmm. block and they all have right. very different ideas of what god is like but are all yes. saying well i we believe it because of faith and personal feelings and the next group says well we believe in a completely different other god that we're sure it's true because of our personal feelings and the faith that we have in them. And then another block on the other corner. You know, you come to Tennessee, it's literally every corner of the block. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right, right. And it's Absolutely. like, hey, our personal feelings and our faith have pointed us to this complete other nature of God. And they're not compatible with each other. In fact, I think there are people that could have personal feelings and faith that there is no gods. So it's it's from, interesting, from right? Perspective, that, that, uh certainly like when, when dogma doesn't agree, you know, those schisms, uh, it's, it's really kind of where like the, you know, um, well, well, certainly we experienced it in the Episcopal church, right. Around Gene Robinson, when, when, uh, the gay bishop was elected, 
uh, in I think it was the early 2000s, um, there was, were, was definitely a lot of tension between the the group that thought, hey, we should be accepting of of gay bishops, and and you know they're allowed to elect a gay bishop if if they want to, and the other side saying, you know, homosexual homosexuality is a sin, yeah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, is and that's well, very much like where I think, you know, when you get into those like little nuanced things, that's where a lot of uh, animosity uh, builds up. But yeah. I think that at the same time, uh, religions in general uh, do have some common elements uh, yeah. around, well, around I mean, rit- ritual, around, yeah. uh, uh, you know, loving each other, trying to be you know compassionate yeah. well depends uh, on which which testament they come down on i guess <laughs> um the do the i'm not familiar with the episcopal but i assume they still use the bible yes and yes. the bible does not change and well, they're, they're but, the but, people who uh who are saying that uh you know gay uh men and women uh are okay and should be treated uh equally as regular you know citizens and all that do not have a lot of uh biblical support where the people who are against it do i mean you can quote all kinds of things about treat your you know love your neighbor and treat your neighbor as yourself but when it comes right down to homosexuality there are uh, lines in the bible that that prohibit it yeah the the, and, the, cl- the clobber verses sure yeah uh, that's what how, that's what how we do call you them. get around that in in the church well I'll, I'll tell you how I get around it, uh, and that is to say that I, you know, I personally view the Bible as man's search for God and not, you know, God's, you know, literal word. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, uh, just like I eat shellfish, you know, I, w- I wear, uh, mixed you know, mixed fabrics, yeah. uh, right? Uh, all those, all those sorts of things. Um, I, I also think that, uh, you know, there were, you know, maybe reasons in the Old Testament where, uh, you know, they thought that. I mean, hey, we, we also thought that, uh, you know, imaginary play for children was wrong, you know, not so long ago, right? And that's, uh, yeah. to get back to and Mr. Rogers. People. Right, and left-handed people, right? And it's not that long ago that scientifically, and we had, you know, psychologists and whatever, and early child psychologists saying, imaginative play is bad, you know, you should only have reality and you're you're crippling them by you know letting them uh, pretend, uh, yeah. and that turned out to not be the case. So I think um, anyway, that's 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 how I uh, personally view it. And can I throw something out? Um, if yeah. it, if the Bible just represents the search for God, why use the Bible at all? If the God that you believe in seems to be compatible with potentially being chaos. Or non-biblical at all, or write your own. Yeah, why do you need the Bible at all? Well, I think that there's definitely a traditional you specifically, aspect. You specifically, but me specifically, I think that uh, I've I've accepted that human beings uh, um, relate to things narratively. So right? I, I'm just going to uh, catch you here again. I'm not talking about human beings in general. I'm talking sure. specifically about you. Why do you sure, need the but- Bible? But for, for me, I still, like, I'm, I'm a human being. I think narrative is very powerful. And I think that, uh, you know, Jesus' parables are, are, are powerful. I think that, you know, as an example, the uh, Adam and Eve story, uh, as, as uh, Wombat we were discussing before, I think gets to a fundamental problem that we as, as humans face, that we, you know, are biologically evolved to live in hunter-gatherer groups, uh, right in the Pleistocene era, and uh, uh, you know millions of years ago, or hundreds of thousands of years ago, when when biologically we're identical, right, to those humans that were living in the Serengeti, yeah. and that's not what uh, what we're living like right now, and that's kind of where you know we can't go back to the Garden of Eden uh, because you know I don't think we can choose to. Um, go back to those hunter gatherer groups, Baby Seal. Uh, or I don't think people are, are willing to. Just to get right. back to the, just to get back to the the crux of the question, it sounds like you have the Bible because you appreciate the narratives that are in that story. But how many other yes. religious texts have you gone through? Because there may be ones that appeal to you even more than the, more so than the Bible. No, definitely, I've read, and, and that's and, and why that's not really use where... those as a, and abandon the Bible that you have? Because clearly, there's more contemporary texts. Where you can get understanding philosophical of, texts. Where you too. can get if you like hunter and gatherers, there's plenty of actual books that have literacy and, and 
articulate points <laughs> about how the hunter gatherers became about. And you don't need the Bible to explain that. If you like, uh, Jesus's parables, there's many much more updated, uh, decrees for how laws are developed, how morality should work, how we should treat each other as a functional society uh-huh. that are far more detailed and actually demonstrably successful than anything Jesus had said. Why do you need the Bible? Well, and I think that uh, those 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 things should inform it, right? And and uh, certainly, you know, me reading uh, books like uh, you know Ishmael or or um, uh, I, I read a long time ago, so you know, don't try to quote me on it. Sapiens, right? And I think that's kind of where those things can inform those narratives for me. But I think that it's still a beneficial narrative. I still get something from those stories. Even if it's informed, you know, by science and by those other uh, readings, and so th- I guess the reason that I don't abandon them is because uh, I haven't come across. Uh, well, number one, you know, that's that's part of the community. That's part of uh, me being able to discuss uh, ideas with with people to have that kind of shared uh, narrative that we can then talk about uh, and say, hey, maybe you know. Yeah, this parable is really meaningful, but what if we, you know, updated it or something? You know, what if, or uh, what if our understanding can can slightly change? I mean, what if those I'm parables have of... already been updated and we already have better text to go by? Why still use the old, outdated parables? Like you can still have well, them in the but... church, you can still read them, you can still inform yourself with it. But it sounds like if I were to go to an Episcopal church, the main book that would be there is the Bible, right. and the main thing that you would be taught from is the Bible. When we seem to be in agreement that we have better stories that we can well, get no, even I, more information from. I, I'm Why not, still I'm not sure it? that I completely agree with the better stories. I mean, what, ah, talk what to me then. Uh, better, what, yeah, what better stories uh, do, you, do you know of on that that uh, is a better story than, than let's, let's just stick out. with that Adam I'll, and Eve as, yeah, I'll throw something as, out a, of as a narrative. What if we knew for a fact that a parable in the Bible that we love very much is outdated and we say, hey, I actually have a better way to explain why we have hunter-gatherer societies. I have a better way of understanding how we came about to learn how knowledge works and how we learned what, you know, how to treat each other as people and how we learn if snakes can actually talk or not and stuff like that. Hey, why don't we just use that text instead? <laughs> yeah, well, and, well, not only that, but I mean, there are, there are Eastern religious texts, you know, Buddhism, Confucianism, sure. Taoism, yeah. that have better phil- philosophical oh, arguments. Oh, yeah, you go there to are, Egyptian texts, you have the Ten Commandments and more. Yeah. Secular books that show, teach better morals, like all the works of Shakespeare hmm. and, uh, and uh, Ulysses and, and things like that. I mean... I mean, Why does it have to be a, a religious text of the Jewish history uh, to teach you the things that you, you deem are important? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm, I'm marathoning all the episodes stories? of the Twilight Zone right now. Every episode has a great moral behind it, and it's acted so I, I well. I love the Twilight Zone. I, oh, yeah. I, listen, I can tell you, I probably learned more from the Twilight Zone than I have from any chapter in the Bible recently. Of recently, yeah. and I've read through that thing many, many times. But I'll tell you what, um, there are options Far more so. Like, if you were to consider the, the concept of just one book decreeing how we should treat each other versus every other book, are we really that confident that the Bible is the best one that we should, you know, base everything off of? Well, I, you know, I, I think I'm definitely not the, the best uh, defender of the, of the Bible that, that you could have on. But you do uh, you use know, it, I, so I'm asking specifically for you, why, why rely on it so much? Well, for for me, I don't rely on it. Uh, that I would I would say I don't rely on it, on it that much. I do think that there there they are still uh, some some beautiful stories there that that help me uh, you know approach uh, and understand uh, as we develop uh, better better thoughts and and things like you know uh, Twilight Zone. It's it's not it's not uh, they're not mutually exclusive, and I think that. Um, the benefit for me personally and the reason why I still um, find it meaningful is to be able to have, uh, you know, conversations with uh, people in my community and, and sort of have that shared um, that shared narrative that we can then go off into other ideas. But, you know, like I'm sure a lot of them are. What if there's a better starting uh, place to have that of, kind of conversation? Of, of my stoic, my stoic ideas. Just, that, I'm, and that I'm that sorry, I can't, I can't see you, so it's, I, it's always is this uncomfortable thing of uh, interjecting. But what if there was a better book to use as a starting yeah. basis to have that conversation rather than the book that was written, you know, like roughly two thousand years ago? 
in, in different people. Uh, and, and, and the thing about it gets me, uh, or uh, I have a problem with, is when you share those those stories uh, and narratives, as it were, in your community. Yeah. It's not simply the idea that you're the, the ideas that you're exchanging and and testing their worth. It comes with a whole. Uh, load of authoritarianism with mm. it. I mean, the, the societies that put forward those, tor- those stories are basically telling you that these are true, you have to believe them and obey them. And, and, and the different people that you talk to in your community using those shared narratives are going to um, support the authoritarian part of it to different degrees. Yeah. And you never know how much they're going to they're going to be sporting it. It uh, sounds like you have a good it. mindset about this, but there are people who will take that far more literally than you and see you yeah. using it as a sign for them to be more confident in the authoritarian uh-huh. parts that they are already well, convinced are true. And I, I think the issue there is authoritarianism, and that right. certainly isn't limited to you know religious groups. I think that's uh, you know Stalin, for instance, wasn't religious. Well, so he was I, trained I think, as I, a religious as person. He was trained oh, well. as a, 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 a uh, uh, sure. Sure, but I, the, 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 the point to me is that I think, you know, uh, certainly I and I think a, a lot of people in, in my personal community would, you know, support the, hey, maybe we shouldn't, like, uh, you know, support the authoritarian abuse of, of religious texts, you know. I would throw something uh, inter- I- I- Interestingly, like, when you look at the history of the U.S., um, it was, uh, you know, the Southern Baptists who were for separation of church and state because right. they were the, the minority religious group at the time. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, Would you be in so, favor if the Episcopal Church says, actually, we're going to throw out the Bibles and get the Quran in here? It's the more updated Judaic test, uh, text. We're going to learn from the Quran here from now on and uh, maybe even in the future move over to the Bhagavad Gita or something like that. Would you be... Or or Mormonism. The yeah, or Mormonism, great, yeah. Jewel of great cause. Oh, man. And, and there's nothing oh, wrong man. with Mormonism. Girl. There's great stories in that book. In fact, there's more stories in that book than there are <laughs> in the New Testament. <laughs> if you like stories and seeing how people get along with each other, that's there's more of that in that book. So why not use that? No, no, that that, that is an interesting point. Uh, but I think that... And why is that funny? The... <laughs> Oh, I, uh, you know, it, it's a it's a good point in the sense of, uh, you know, there are uh, obviously, you know, very strong families in the, the Mormon church. You get the I think exact same stories you get from your New Testament. The, those books haven't moved. Sure. Plus more stories of how people interact with each other and search for God. Why not use the Mormon text? I think that that gets uh, back, you know, it gets to tradition. It gets to, I, I don't think that that would, that would necessarily happen, but I don't think that there, I have, I would have like, I, I don't know, that big of a problem with it. If, if we were to change over the narrative, why wouldn't you be ecstatic to something else? Now you have a book that, that has more stories, plus the stories you already like. Why isn't that even better? Why don't you do it right now? Like, it ha- <laughs> why is it funny? <laughs> you, you gave me the standard. I'm just following the same standard. Well, <clears throat> I think that uh, having having read some of those, I I don't think that they're you know that much better than than. Why than not? That. You already uh, said you don't take it literally seriously. You say you just appreciate the stories and the concept of people searching for gods. If you already said you had a separation between reality and 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 what you and what you participate as this imaginative play. Why not engage in you know Mormons or Jadism or Jehovah Witnesses witness books? They have the same stories. That are in the Bible that you're reading, plus more, or bring them all in. Yeah, it well, seems that I there did. could be potentially a double standard here. That's what I'd like to point out, and it's well, interesting it was, why. I think that uh, the reason that it doesn't happen is because those uh, it, it, tradition, those right? yeah, those traditions like happened organically, and that's where I think um, you know. Uh, in some ways, yeah, we, we work with what has been handed down to us, and that's where, you know, the Episcopal Church certainly updates, like, the prayer book, for instance. And I certainly uh, wonder if, as a means to getting to a true conclusion, just working only with what was handed down to you is a reliable way to get to a true conclusion. Or could there be something better to get to a true um, or a better understanding of reality, rather than just working what's given to you? It seems to be the case that everyone... And at least from a religious perspective, largely relies on tradition to inform their impression of reality. 
and I I can only see from the outside different people pointing at very different things with utmost confidence and using tradition to back that up. It makes me realize that perhaps tradition may not necessarily be the best way to reach that kind of conclusion. For something that should be the most important thing for me, whether or not this God exists, whether or not I'm actually getting like true information, whether or not these feelings that I have actually are coming from this belief, or if there's something I'm generating within myself. And that would be a great thing to unlock if I actually knew if that was true or not. And I'm, and while I wouldn't discredit anything that you can get from the Episcopal Church, I really love it. I like, I love the concepts. I love the sense of community. I do wonder if the grand conclusions that are coming about with regard to a supernatural deity are justified and whether or not I'm justified in having them based on an idea of tradition. What do you think? You're listening to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on Wozo 103.9 LPFM in Knoxville, Tennessee. Feel free to join in on the conversation at 865-333-5937. That's 865-333-5937. And now, back to the show. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. What do you think? Uh, well, I, I think that that's that's sort of the the aspect that's unknowable, you know, from from my standpoint, and that's where I think um, if it's unknowable, you know, why be convinced that it's true? Well, I'm not convinced that it's true. Uh, I think that uh, I like the idea of of God. I like that uh, you know it's it matches with. Um, you know, my personal experience and feelings, but I'm very open to the fact that, you know, maybe it is chaos. I, I can't know that, hmm. uh, from, from, from the data that, that I have from a, you know, a reason standpoint. Um, uh, but similar to the way that, uh, you know, I, um, you know, accept the, um, the calculated distance from the earth to the sun, uh, but not doing the proof myself, you yeah. know, um, that's kind of where I think there's something for, for me, something meaningful for me, uh, in, um, the ideas that other people yeah. have had in the past that, that I can approach, but not take, take too far. Right. Yeah. And then in a dogmatic or ideological, uh, sure. way. Larry, just as well, an update, we're near the bottom of the show. Uh, I'll close. Yeah. We'll close out and we'll edit this appropriately, but do you still want to do your, uh, uh, sign off just so that, uh, we can get it in, in the same time frame? I've got a different sign off this time. Oh, wait, do a quick sign off. <laughs> okay. Uh, one thing I wanted to say was that, uh, you're talking about believing the distance to the sun. Well, believing the distance to the sun doesn't cost you anything. Religious beliefs can definitely cost you something. Look at the 9-11 pilots who flew their planes into the building. It cost them their lives. Uh, There's a lot of different things that come with religious belief, and they should be examined Mm. to see what kind of cost you'd be playing. No, I I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And uh, I think that, for me, uh, that's where... um, uh, to make I editing, very, to make editing really sorry. easy for me, uh, how about we'll, we'll continue this off, um, offline. I'll re- also record it, but at least for now, uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for joining us on the radio, uh, digital yeah. free thought radio. This is 103.9 FM. Wozo. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. See ya. <laughs> okay. Keep going. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean to screw up the, the sign off. Sorry. No, no, I didn't. We can edit. Uh, Great, great. I can uh, edit it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm trying to get everyone on the same page. All right, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, uh, great. So, okay, where was the, what was the thought? Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think that that's an aspect of, again, kind of understanding, hey, uh, are the ideas of, of God that I have, you know, beneficial to me and my community? As opposed to, yeah, creating a situation. And that, and that's where, like, you know, ultimately the homosexuality causes break down for me because my experience with my homosexual friends is that they don't have a choice that they're loving. Right. But, you know, there's sure. nothing like that that's happening here. We need to accept them as people and as members of our church hey. and as full members of the church. Sure. Um, so, and that's, and that's really where, uh, yeah. Can I throw something in? Just throwing my hat in here. Like, if someone told me, um, like, if I told someone, hey, or someone told me, hey, I have a cat, and I'm like, oh, cool, and they show me a picture of the cat, I believe that they have a cat, because 
that's a pretty mundane thing to believe. People have cats. And that's good enough sure. evidence for me to believe that they have a cat. If they told me they had a, an actual tiger, like an actual Bengal tiger, I'm like, I'm going to have to see a picture or something to like, sh- I won't take your word for it. And they show me a picture of them with the tiger. I'll be like, oh man, I don't know about this. It could, I don't know. It's prob- I don't know. Oh, sure. I guess I believe, it, but not really. I'd see, I'd have to see like a bunch of pictures and maybe a Facebook account, maybe like some uh-huh. sort of like scar right. on their body for them training it. If they told me they had like a purple dragon that came from Jupiter in a time machine and they had a picture of them standing next to like a DeLorean and there's like a purple dragon behind them. I'm like, I don't care if you have a picture of it. I don't believe you. That thing is too extraordinary for me to believe what the amount of evidence that you're providing. Right. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and i can't imagine anything more extraordinary than a supernatural deity that made the entire universe as a result if people say hey you know you believe it because a hundred people said it or you believe it because scientists said you know you know the sun exists and light takes time to travel to the earth i was like okay these are mundane things that we can test and and examine but in a a supernatural deity that's an incredibly extraordinary thing I'm going to need more than just a yeah. book saying that it's Especially true. Especially one that monitors every thought you have but, and, and really cares where you put your penis. Larry, just and finishing the thought. Like, just well, finishing the thought. Finishing the thought. There, I'm going to. I won't believe it just because a book says so. I won't believe it because you know everybody on the planet says so. I'm going to need right. more evidence to believe this extraordinary thing. The standards of evidence are different based on how incredible the thing that I'm being told right. is. It seems to be that case. Do you agree that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence? I do agree with that. I think that, again, um, you know, a good skeptic or a good uh, postmodernist could say, like, um, you know, it can tear down anything, right? Any any kind of uh, um, rational argument that that you have. I mean, as long as you don't accept prepositions, you, you, you can you can deal with it all, right? But ultimately, it all gets down to, you know, and even science. Uh, it gets down to feelings. So why does it get down to feelings? And is feelings a reliable way to get to a true conclusion? I tell you, I've been at work. I've had worked the night shift once. I walked to my car and I thought there was a dog rolling around the corner. I saw the dog. I literally saw the dog and he was rolling towards me and I'm freaking right. out. I have every hormone in my body firing because I'm like, I don't want to fight dogs, dude. I'm a big black guy, but like, <laughs> I'm not bulletproof. I'm not dog proof. I can get bitten and I bleed too, you know? And it turned out just to be a plastic bag. It rolled right past me oh. and I'm like, oh my gosh, I had every feeling in the world that this was a real dog yeah. coming after me and I was wrong. Right. That's a real but, story. Our yeah, personal feelings, feelings aren't facts. Yeah, our personal feelings a reliable way to get to a true conclusion. If I could be wrong about a dog in a plastic bag, why am I relying on feelings to get me on that God claim? Why was that even useful? Right. And how do you interpret those feelings? How can you be sure that your interpretation is correct? Yeah. How do you know your right. feelings are the same as anyone else's? Like, why? Yeah. Why is that a reliable way to get to a true conclusion? Well, I can get to conclusions, but why true ones? To, 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 to me, the, the, the reliable um, piece of it is what are the aspects of, of God that um, a majority of religion and the majority of people agree with? You know, God is good, right? God is, uh, you know, potentially inside the universe is imminent. Uh, possibly outside, uh, you know, that's, that's where I, I don't know. I don't know what not the, but, not, but, but yeah, I, yes, not to, not to frustrate you, but this is only the current understanding of what the popular idea of God is. You go back a thousand years, it's completely different. You go back another thousand, it's completely different. A thousand years from now, we might believe in a completely different God than we are now. If that changes that this, based it, on the majority, why are we relying on the majority to determine whether or not the, the aspects of the God that we believe to be true are true? If that can change based on whoever's around or whoever has the most babies, <laughs> there, 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 there is a there is a great uh, yeah. My I had a sociology professor who started his college career as a religion major, and uh, his first sociology class, you know, said, "Okay, you can predict what kind of religion a society has based on you know uh, these 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 factors, right?" Of whatever how developed and and what stage of of development that they're in uh in terms of like is it an animist animistic uh religion versus you know possibly polytheistic versus monotheistic uh and so on and so that's that's why he changed his major from uh um from religion to to sociology I, i definitely think that that's that's part of it right but um that's where for me 
uh, living in the society that we live in. And, and I have like, you know, by the way, gone to, uh, you know, mosques, I've gone to Buddhist temples. I'm I've not challenging you. I'm just asking, different, why different, are you relying different. on feelings to reach a true conclusion? That's the, that's the focus of this question. If we can agree that personal feelings aren't reliable, that I can have very strong personal feelings about certain things that aren't true, like, you know, about people with, about genres of music or people with certain right. colored skins or whether or not someone has a penis or not. If I could have feelings about those strong things and, and they dictate how I act, are those well, a reliable but, way to know if that's a true conclusion or not? Like I've been, I can't tell you how many women I've seen drive Jeep Wranglers in the city. It makes me think, oh, Jeeps are just chick cars. They're like things that daddies buy for their good daughters so that they never get in car accidents that they have to worry about. And like women like big cars. So they're always going to be, whenever I see a Jeep, it's always going to be a woman. I've, I've seen that time and time again. Therefore, in my mind, from the personal feelings that I've reached, and the and the evidence that I've had and the experiences I've had, every Jeep Wrangler is driven by a woman. Like that's a conclusion I can reach with the evidence that I've had. Is that a reliable <laughs> way to get to that conclusion? Well, I think that uh, interestingly, I mean, this is where um, right the the, the uh, what is the crisis right now striking kind of social sciences of of being able to reproduce, um, you know, published published results. Uh, in papers, uh, that's actually kind of disturbing. What is that? The replication crisis? Have you heard about this? No, I haven't. So this is a pretty recent thing where a lot of published, like, psychology papers... Does this go towards uh, answering the question that I asked? Because I had a question hanging out there I genuinely wanted an answer to. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, you said, yeah, your, your, your feelings can be mistaken, for sure. Um, I would say that feelings that you have over time uh, can be more reliable. I mean, I don't question am I mistaken about uh, drinking my tap water? You no, know? no doubt. You have a reasonable expectation based on a grand majority of mundane experiences with your tap water that it's not dangerous. I don't exactly. know if you have as many with a supernatural being. And I'm wondering well, why, why use a standard for mundane tap water for a incredibly extraordinary supernatural being? Why are these well, two things being used for the same for the same kind of conclusion? It seems like but, they're a completely but, different standards but that's of where, testing. But that's where I feel like I'm not, uh, and this is my feeling, right? Mm -hmm. But my feeling is that I'm not making an extraordinary claim to say that um, reality outside myself exists that I don't know. Um, uh, you know, those the the all the aspects of of reality outside of myself uh, and uh, part of you know, the idea that helps me to capture the wonder that you were describing that, you know, I, I, I'm very much, uh, uh, find like Carl Sagan, uh, Carl Sagan's view, Spinoza's, you know, uh, writings on God. Uh, I'm, you know, before Einstein we get to more names, well. do you believe Einstein's that in God, God exists? Again, I, I think that 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 is a it's a meaningful concept for, to me. Hmm. And I, what? But do you actually believe that God exists? No, uh, I believe that God exists. Hmm. For, That's you know, what we're talking me. about here. That's just what we're talking about. So let's. I want to know. Do you have a good reason for that belief? I think that. Uh, I think that it's in a lot of ways separate from the um, knowable universe and in that sense uh, it's it's outside the um, you know ways of ways of proving and that's why I don't I, I try to keep myself and those beliefs as small as possible I and as humble as possible so in it, terms of like so, but it sounds uh, like you know. the God belief is dependent on three at least as far as you presented that you exist in a knowable universe, that there's a universe beyond that, that we don't know anything about it, and that, that God lives there. No, I wouldn't say that. Okay, uh, I, please read uh, I, I think that there, it's possible that God is, you know, the universe, like a, a pantheistic, you know, view. It's possible that, that it's a, a deist view. I don't know. Do you, you know, if that, we don't know... What I, what I do know is that, or what I, what I you know, that I guess the aspects of God that I feel comfortable, most comfortable with is that, uh, you know, there, there, there's a very rational aspect of God that, 
you know, the world is ordered, that it has to follow certain laws. But how do we know that's related to a god? Like, I can definitely flip a coin and it can land heads and I can say my cat's black. But I, can, I can't make the argument of saying, well, because I flipped this coin and it landed heads, I have a black cat. Like, how am I connecting the fact that I have a rational uh, universe that seems orderly and a god existing? How are you connecting those two things? Well, because I, I, I'm connecting God to reality, uh, and that's like a, a way of um, tell me the reliable, me, tell me the reasonable way that you're doing that in like in a reliable method, so that I can believe it too if it's true. Because I want to know a few things. Like how are you? No, I, how are you doing that? I, I because again that that uh, relationship with reality like i could say the same thing about like shiva or i can say the same thing sure. about my camera on my desk right now like this camera on desk exists therefore there's rash rationality in the universe and math exists yes my cat my camera does exist and math does exist but how right. am i connecting those two it seems so desperate like how am i really can, what's the methodology that i'm using that you can tell me or you can tell me that connects hey we seem to be living in an orderly world and a god exists that's responsible for that. Like, what's that connection that's there? And is that connection reliable? Like, do you have that? You don't have to have it right now. We can talk about this in the future. But do you have that? Do you have a reliable way that connects the reality that we seem to be sharing and a supernatural deity that is likely responsible for it? And if you do, I want to know about it because that seems incredible. But I'm well, hearing things but, that are like uh, personal I think, experiences, I think that you, like that. you know, when you when you say like supernatural God and that that uh, I I guess my my uh, my belief in God is doesn't say that it necessarily has to be supernatural and maybe there is no. Um, so if your God's you know, natural, can we test it? No, uh, it's okay. not. It's not a. It, it's again. I think it's something that. Uh, is do we it's, have it's an more, idea where your god exists? It seems like it the definition of the god that we're talking about shifts as we get mm -hmm. close to it. Yeah. Like it seems yeah. like when I say, "Hey, can we test the god?" Right. No, the god it could be chaos, it could be ethereal outside of this reality. It's like, okay, well, it's supernatural then. No, 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 it exists in this world and potentially interacts with things like so. It does do things that we know about. No, no, no. There's no way to know if it exists or not. <laughs> we need to know what we're talking about here because this isn't the first time that we've ran into this loop i i'm right. seeing it only i'm only telling you this from an outside perspective i don't sure. have, i don't have a horse in the race i don't I'm, I'm telling you i don't believe that there's no god i don't believe that there is a god i'm not convinced either way so i'm probably the best larry and i are probably the best unbiased parties to tell you that we're not convinced that you have a very good understanding of this god that you're talking about uh, if, no i don't if, I, well i don't i don't have very strong beliefs on you know what 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 god is i have yet, ideas right? yet you are willing and to that's... defend on multiple hours at a time that this god actually does exist and that your belief is founded and reliable and justified why bother well, uh, because i i enjoy thinking about it i know I you do i do you do. Examining I know that. It. it feels great <laughs> i think it's but it why should be, it, should but be, how did it should be examined and it should be you know something uh, that I that I think about. But why and, do it from I'm, the perspective of hey, this thing makes me feel good, therefore it's real, and now we can have fun thinking about it. Versus why do I believe this thing is real? Do I have a good reason to believe it? I'm going to withhold belief until I have a good reason right. to believe in it, and then you can be like anybody else in a much more rational perspective of like saying, hey, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't actually actually believe it, but I do like learning more about the history of how it came to be. That way I can see it from an unbiased perspective. Because I can tell you, I played Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's all about Greek, and you're like running around in like a, a simulation of right. Greece. I love all the gods. I love interacting with like, you know, vendors and, and pirates and like figures from ancient Greece and from the Peloponnese War. It's amazing, and I can appreciate it. Despite the fact that I don't have any belief in those gods, or I'm convinced that any of them were true, you don't have to have that belief that you that you're willing to defend at this point to appreciate the benefits of the belief, or even experience the same things that you're already experiencing. And I'm wondering what is more important to you: the fact that you can have these good, comfortable beliefs that you can appreciate looking into, or the rationality of understanding, hey, I'm willing to have a high standard for what I believe is true. And if, in fact, this aren't, if this isn't true or if it is true, I will, I'll say I don't know for now, but I can still examine it and still have these really great conversations, but not from the perspective of I already am on team. This God exists. Like there's no, there's no reason to send out your, 
<laughs> your your colors already. Like you can, if you don't right. have a good reason to believe it, I don't know is one of the best answers that you could have. You and then, give, yeah. And it's in the intellectually honest position, and there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I don't know if this God exists. I don't believe in this God. I'm not convinced that it's true. But I can still appreciate the community that I'm part of. I can still contribute and have the meetings or whatever in the interfaith groups. I think you're in the perfect place for it. But if you don't have a good reason for it, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't waste a single second saying, well, maybe I do. What about personal feelings? What about if a hundred people said that the God was true? What if it was just from tradition? What if I had like these really, really interesting feelings that I don't know where they came from? Or if it makes me feel bad about relatives? Like, no, you would immediately recognize these are bad, unreliable ways to get to true conclusions. And I care about what's true and what's not true. So why not just, why, I, and I'm not forcing you to do anything, but I'm wondering, like, why isn't that sure. as obvious to you as it is from us who are on the outside saying, hey, what are you doing right now? You have a great mind. Why are you convincing yourself that something's true when you have no good reason to believe it? I've got a great video I'd like to recommend to people if you're interested. Uh, sure. You go to YouTube if you're at a computer. I assume you are. I'm at a computer. Yes. Uh, look up Evidence 3, E-V-I-D-3, N-C-3. Do you see, uh, he's got a series of videos called Why I'm No Longer a Christian. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what was the uh, name? It's, yeah. it's evidence, but spell the second and third E with a three. Oh, got it. Also, check out Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's got a series of videos. Uh, I think the first ten of them really are the series. Uh, each one's about ten minutes long, uh, where he a very painstakingly documents his his uh, journey from Christian fundamentalist to atheist, and it takes him through college. and He has a mentor that he emails back and forth, and he talks about every aspect uh, of belief. And he's very eloquent, and his production values are great. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a very uh, good series of videos, and uh, you can break them up into ten minute segments if you want to. Also, if you like videos, I'd recommend check out other street epistemologists. There's Anthony Magnolasco, yeah. uh, yeah. curious cordial curiosity. You will see mold yeah. when it doesn't. It may not be as clear right now, but like the more you see people use the same reasons that you're using to believe completely right. other different things, makes you realize, oh, okay. Maybe I should get better reasons because you should always be towards the pursuit of getting better reasons for what you believe. Right. And and when you realize, oh, here's the standard, and all these people believe completely different other gods or complete like UFOs abducting them, or that crystals can talk to them, or that their grandparents are reincarnated birds and cardinals and parks, and they believe right. the exact same reasons why I believe in my God, I need to have a higher standard for what I believe. And it's like we said at the beginning of the show, you can't choose what you believe. You're either convinced or you're not convinced. And you'll either find that you're convinced right. with the current standard you have or that you're not convinced with the standard you have. But either way, you can keep looking. And I feel like I don't want you to ever be in a point where you're like so comfortable with your with the feelings that you have that you stop looking. So right. no, I, uh, I absolutely agree with that. I definitely, um, you know, one, one, one experience that I had that was uh, very cool, like early on in stoicism is thinking through like free will and determinism and, uh, um, and yeah, it came to some really, I don't know, interesting insights there that, that were, were very challenging and, uh, no, I appreciate, you know, the conversation. I guess my, my question for both of you, uh, is what, what, um, would you like, uh, uh, say that your philosophy of life is in terms of, you know, the why of, of life and how, how you, you both kind of got there. I mean, where did life come from? type of thing no 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 like more more personal of like you know what With what the purpose do you, of life yeah what's what's your i guess <laughs> well, pur purpose pur of life or what what your goal is well, or like what purpose, motivates is, us? purpose is one or self-given yeah. you, you develop them yourself it's very important some of the most important thing you can do in your life is develop your purpose and you don't just have one you have many mm, and they sure. change throughout your entire life yeah so, I mean, it's it's not a simple question. It's not saying, well, uh, this is my purpose, because, uh, you know, they're evolving. So I'd say one of the truest <laughs> things about a secular perspective is that I'm not given purpose by a greater being to me. 
I get the right. responsibility to right. choose those for myself and I can change them right. if I need to and I can evolve them as I evolve and grow up myself. And I think that's a wonderful responsibility such that my purpose is now absolutely right. finding purpose and giving myself yeah. purposes and learning from the purposes that I have. Yeah, yeah. And if you're interested in, in uh, some of my writings, you can go to digitalfreethought.com and click on the blog button. I've, I've taken those articles and put them in a book and it's not available on uh, Amazon called Atheism, What's It All About? <laughs> but, but anybody can go to the, my website and read those articles and more. And our shows are archived there too, as well. No, awesome. Yeah. No, I, so so as an example, uh, Ty, like I think you know from our earlier conversation, I mean, would you would you position yourself as kind of like an enlightened hedonist? You know, kind of like. The individual and, and I don't know and what pleasure he, is kind of the highest good. In other words, no, I don't. Uh, so, is that a, like a utilitarian perspective? Are you familiar with that term? Yes. So uh, I'm familiar with that, but uh, utilitarian. I mean, you typically they're more like uh, whatever is the highest know, look, pleasure looking is at good. The hum, looking looking at the human 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 uh, humanity is like the whatever. Uh, unit of, of measures. Okay, sort of so I'm not I'm not up to date with like the details of these um, understandings. I would say like um, I don't know what hedonism either is either. I would I I think my my philosophy for at least how I conduct myself is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm willing to say I don't know when I don't know things, and I'm open minded to learning new things. And I have a, a, the, I'm trying to have the highest stamp. I how do I put it? I want to believe as many true things as possible, but I also don't want to believe. Yeah the fewest false things as possible. So I need to have a very right. good standard so that I know where the falsehoods are and where the true the truths are. And I'm willing to say, I don't know if I don't know that way I can at least put myself in a perspective where I'm at least intellectually honest. Beyond right. that, it's easy enough to do things that maintain my well being, And that just requires me understanding long-term benefits versus like short-term gains. Like, Hey, I right. can steal that money from that bank today but I might get arrested and put it in a box for the rest of my life afterwards. I'm not sure. going to do that. So, hey, I'm going to do things that are towards my well-being. I'm going to pay my taxes. I'm going to contribute to society. I'll be a good moral model for people who can look up to me and maybe even follow my path or set a good example for the neighborhood that I'm in. And these have been demonstrably beneficial to me. And I like right. having things that are beneficial for me. So, like, I call that selfishness. But there's nothing really wrong with looking out toward for my own self-preservation and self-interest. I found and your that, fellow man. And my fellow man, because that benefits me, because now my fellow man's looking out for me as well. So it all right. leads towards, hey, what's beneficial? And this all benefits me. Um, it's called human humanism. In a sense, <laughs> right? yeah. It's humanism in a nutshell, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And that's, uh, you know, uh, again, not to drop whatever, uh, you know, stoic terms or whatever, but that's very much the eudaimonia the like good flow of life beneficial um sort of thing sort of view and and uh, uh there are just some very interesting um arguments between like the stoics and the epicureans right historically of like the epicureans were just all about pleasure and like you just isolate yourself in a garden a nice peaceful garden somewhere and that's mm -hmm. that's that's that the like, highest people, though. good and that's the most beneficial thing whereas the stoics would say no the best thing is for you to like live a life of service and uh that that not only benefits society but also ultimately you and and uh that sort of like you know uh, like a mr rogers would be a great example of 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 sort of that uh, a life well lived if that's that, it then i would disagree with that point of view because i would say i shouldn't be obligated to have to provide service i would say hey, well it's I'm not it's not an obligation though but it, i think it's a way of maybe recognizing that in benefiting others you're you're benefiting yourself yeah you my, know, my through, idea, through, through benefiting others my idea is whatever you do that causes the least amount of needless harm is the best thing. And if, if there's a guy who's like, I just want to have a, 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 a beach where I'm sitting and not hurting anybody for the rest of my life. I'm like, okay, right. cool. that's not a problem. And if there's a guy who's like, right. I want to join the military and help. And I want to do community service. I'm like, they're both doing what they want to do with their own lives. Sure. Neither of sure. them are causing needless harm. I'm fine with it. I'm not going to force one to do the other or the other to do the, the alternative. I think, they're both rocking it. But if there's some guy who's just kicking puppies <laughs> for no good <laughs> right, reason, right, like, you right. need to stop. Either be like this guy or this other guy, but we're going to stop you if you do needless harm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. do what you do what you want. My main my three rules are like just don't be a jerk, you know, 
work work hard like you know enjoy the life that you have and then try to keep your opinions to yourself <laughs> which i'm still working on <laughs> right well guys i'm, I'm gonna bail uh you guys keep talking if you want to All right. uh ryan i wanted to say thank you very much for being on the show and you're welcome anytime <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, thank you i appreciate happy it. to have you and uh ty thanks again all right later. as usual appreciate you uh, okay. see you guys later can i do a quick survey with you uh, ryan before you head out or uh, sure all right so uh you had done that interview with me i never get the idea or the perspective of someone after the talk that we've had you said you had given it a lot of thought uh yeah was there anything that um you would prefer to express during the call or was there anything that you thought i could improve on with regard to how the conversation went etc um that's a really good question uh i hmm I think uh, the main thing that bothered me is, you know, just like cell phones have that delay, right? Oh, I didn't know about um, that. Okay. Um, so, and, and I don't know if you, you kind of experience it on, on the Facebook thing as well. Uh, like, I, I don't know if you've had, ever had the experience of like being on a uh, conference call and then you walk into the room and they like say something and you hear it like two seconds later oh, in that your, you know, year before you hang up. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that like... That's very, like, whatever, a technical aspect. But I think, um, yeah, to, I, I, I would say if you, like, do it in the future, um, like, you know, uh, I don't, I have an Android phone, so I don't know how it works, but, like, FaceTime or Skype or something where, yeah, you can see, like, facial expressions. Yeah. I think it's also always, like, a good, a good thing. And I think that that's where, you know, um, it's very helpful to, um, have like deep conversations like this face to face and that's sure. that's kind of what I, I also have uh, an unlimited data plan so it's not outside of the ordinary though i wonder what would happen to it if i did an hour-long face video call <laughs> but <laughs> it's worth a shot it's worth a shot you would probably be throttled like, yeah that would be i think guess. so i think i'd be throttled. I was like why are you so grainy but, why is everything so grainy oh. but but yeah that uh, you know um mm -hmm. but in terms of uh everything else no i thought it it, it went really well and uh um, it's, it's definitely, uh, is, uh, you know, giving me a lot to think about. Is there any answer you would give differently now? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. That, I think, uh, I'm, um, you know, what, what, what you said there towards the end was, was very, uh, compelling, um, around, yeah, uh, um, saying, "Hey, these are these are meaningful, but um, you know, uh, the 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 I don't know is maybe the right uh, the right answer." And uh, I don't I don't I don't have uh, I'm I, I'm sort of surprised by my reticence to you know leap there, mm. and so I think that's where I you know I just have to do a little bit more work around. All right, yeah, is there something else? there or or can i you know get to that point and feel feel better about this can i did you do you already know about the coin flip example did i already show that with you yeah and i guess uh, so so just to go uh down that road as well as the example that you used about uh you know a car and putting mm. water versus versus gas in the tank yeah uh, so that's where i kind of feel like i uh you know feel like I've, I've been testing that out in the sense of, um, does belief in God, like actually get my car to where I wanted to go in terms of <laughs> helping me be a better person. Right. Right. And so, um, I kind of feel like that's the case. I don't think you necessarily have to have a belief in God for, you know, the, to get the gas in the tank or, Theoretically, you know, it can be another another source. Theoretically, right in this, this example, but, yeah, and this is entirely but that's hypothetical. What, that's what's worked for me. This, so what? But this is entirely hypothetical. Ahead. If you stopped your belief in God right now, I'm not saying do it, but like if you sure, did, sure. what would change tomorrow about your personality? Not that much, to be honest. Hmm. I mean, that's that's kind of where. Like, would you go around and start murdering people, or would you start wearing clothes uh, no, and exactly, fabrics and exactly. the color purple and like shoving shellfish down your face and being like, "I'm going to lust after every one of my neighbors." <laughs> right. <laughs> or any, whatever. Right, exactly. Uh -huh, yeah. You think anything like that would happen? 
No, no. I, and that's where I think, um, you know, as we kind of ended the, the previous conversation, I don't think it's that, um, uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. Does it, does it, does it really change anything? And so in that sense, is it really the gas in the tank? Hmm, that's something to think about. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Free Thought Radio Hour. Simply the best. WOZOLP 103.9 FM, Knoxville. Thank you for having me.